Hello everyone. It's usually difficult to know what topic I should be addressing and uh, I usually end up reading the emails you are sending me or going through the comments you've left and um, I try to identify what could potentially hurt you more so that then I can think of a way in which I can help you a bit and provide a bit of kindness and joy and hope. This is pretty much the uh, recipe of, uh, of these videos. Unfortunately, today I have to talk about ourselves and uh, even myself personally, and that is something I never really like doing because it just feels presumptuous somehow. There have been people, uh, people who have been with us from the very beginning and who know how difficult the road has been to establish this monastery and to get it started. There have been people who advised me to address these topics sooner. But I haven't, for the same reason, I, I genuinely felt that it would be self-absorbed and presumptuous and to talk about our problems my problems and the problems of the monastery when the world is on fire and to talk about the fact that people say bad things about myself or the fact that people write untruthful completely incorrect things about myself or the monastery at a time when the world is fighting with racism and is fighting with a pandemic and is fighting with hatred and anger to degrees that we really haven't seen in our lifetimes, us in the Western world, because the world is much bigger than the West, and if you want to see persecution and if you want to see pain and suffering, we should look perhaps somewhere else. But, getting back on track, I have not felt comfortable talking about myself at a time when there are so many hard, difficult topics to address. Unfortunately, I will have to do it today. In a way, although I don't really enjoy it, who would enjoy having to talk about the fact that some people hate you, or some people wish you ill, or some people call you a heretic, or would like you beaten up, as some, again, very kind gentlemen have uh, expressed a wish, a desire um, online. It's not nice, of course it's not nice, it's not what you want. And I do my best to keep on praying and to keep on loving and to somehow get a sense of understanding in my brains about why they would feel this way. But although it's not something one can ever enjoy, it is something I should have done and I'm grateful that I'm being pushed in a corner so I have to address these topics. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I wouldn't have for the reason I've mentioned before. There are so many things written about the monastery and myself publicly online, and they are so malicious and so ill-intended that I find it impossible to understand what can possibly motivate them, and I find it difficult to just fit this behavior and these feelings within the frame of orthodoxy, within the frame of someone who is called to follow God, who is love. I find it difficult to understand anger. I find it impossible to understand hatred. I don't understand how can someone then write emails rejoicing over the fact that another bad thing has been written about you, rejoicing, gloating over the fact that uh, these things are public. They have always been public. Everything uh, I am going to address in this video today, everything has been public all along. The financial situation of the monastery is public. It has always been public from day one, and it will be public for as long as the monastery exists because we function in the United Kingdom. And this is what the law requires us to do. Everything, every single pound, every single dollar that comes into this monastery is accounted for. The fact that the monastery owns property on the Isle of Mull, 
has also never been a secret. I have written letters to every single person who has donated us even $10 when we bought the property. I've written personal letters and sent these letters to every one of those people because you have to thank people and you have to tell them this is what we've done with your help. This is where your funds have gone. And that has never been a secret. Every time I go to a parish, if I'm asked to give a presentation about the monastery, I always speak about our property. I always include photographs of our houses. In fact, if you go on our website, and I do encourage you to visit our website, malmonastery.com, you will see that there are photographs there of our church, of our chapel, of the pilgrimage house, and of the brother's house. Everything is public, everything is online, and I have personally always spoken about it because it is in our interest that you should know what we do, what we accomplish with your support. And it is also in our interest that you should know that when you come here during one of our pilgrimages, which I strongly recommend that you do if you have the time and the desire, you are not going to be accommodated in a tent. You are going to stay with us. We have purchased a B&B, a bed and breakfast, in 2017, I think. Again, the information is available online. This grand bed and breakfast is a house that has five bedrooms. There are six of us in the community at the moment. And... Um, Last summer, again, you have seen me, when you came in the summer during the pilgrimages, you have seen me that I actually live in a tent. I have to leave the house so that everyone else, our pilgrims and our community, has space in the house. You know, all of this has always been available. And the maliciousness of it all doesn't surprise me because I'm used to it by now. Every time we submit a planning application, for instance, there is an article published in one of our local papers because there are locals who don't want us here. Why is that a surprise? Have you personally ever tried to found a monastery or to establish a parish in a place where there has been no sign of orthodoxy for more than 1,000 years? Because if you had done it, you would have learned that not everyone is happy to see you there. Not everyone reacts positively to the idea that uh, there is a monastic community around them, close to them. There are absolutely wonderful, wonderful, brilliant people on this island who have supported us and are continuing to support us. But there are also people who would like nothing more than to see us leave this island. What is painful indeed is to see the same maliciousness, not, not in the world, in the people who are not in the church, but coming from within the church, this joy that you can hurt somebody, this gloating that you've managed to hurt something that someone else has fought and worked to accomplish for 10 years. This is our 10th year on this island. And we've started from absolutely nothing. We started from less than nothing. We started from a church that was collapsing our, under our own eyes, with me being completely alone and being a student who lived on just the scholarship that I had, to the place where now there is a healthy community here and uh, we have a pilgrimage house and we have a second house because now there are six of us in the community and we have a chapel and we have a church which is now healthy and weatherproof thanks to you. All of these things could not have been done without you. If you listen to any of the presentations I have given anywhere, 
you will see that I thank you and that I name you the Orthodox in the United States because without you, none of this would have been possible. You will see that I include all this information. You will see that I include photographs because, again, I want you to take pride in what we have accomplished. There was this topic of the house. We need the house because, again, there are five bedrooms and there are six of us plus ten pilgrims in the summer. It gets a bit crowded. Which is why, at the beginning of last year, with a growing community, we had to purchase a second house. And we didn't have the money to buy that house. In order to purchase that house, I approached an absolutely wonderful, generous human being who gave us a loan to buy that house. There is this, um, what do you call it, scoop. Someone has a scoop that at the beginning of last year we had over £300,000 in our bank account. Again, it's not much of a scoop because the information is available online and because I've never hidden that. I have written letters and emails telling people about it. But what this reporter or newspaper man does not include in his presentation is the fact that out of that three hundred and I don't know, 40 or 50, whatever it was at the beginning of last year, $300,000 is the loan. The loan that we have, that we had got at that time in order to purchase the house. That money was spent, the house was bought, and now we have to pay back that loan. We had a um, period of grace, and now next year we have to start repaying that loan. And 10% of it every year for the following 10 years. There is nothing hidden in any of this. There is just evil intention on the part of some people. And, uh, and I don't really see what I can do about it. And to tell you the truth, I'm not even convinced I want to do much about it. We have been here for 10 years. St. Columba said that these isles will see once again orthodox monastic life before the end of the world. I expect temptation. I have had temptation from day one. I expect temptation. I expect to be fought. I expect to be hated because Christ tells me and Christ tells all of us that if, you know, the world hated him, they're going to hate us as well. But I still struggle to understand it because I have been so open and I have shared so much of myself and of what we do at the monastery that I would have thought attacks would be impossible. I mean, someone left a comment accusing me that we have a massage room at the monastery. How can that be? How could we hide a massage room or, I don't know, any sort of other room? How can you hide anything of this house with ten pilgrims in it, living here permanently for a full week? We've had over 100 people only last summer being in the same house with us for a week. They've been here. They've taken photographs of every single corner of this property. They've posted photographs of this property on all their social media accounts. In order to have a space for myself, I go and I live out in a tent. Or if I have space in the house, I have to actually make a cross on the door saying, this is the monk's room, please don't come in, or at least knock when you come in. I'm just sad to see this evil intention in the church, and all because I've dared to speak against racism, all because I've dared to speak against disobedience towards our bishops, all because I've dared to tell people not to feel 
abandoned, not to feel unloved just because within their own parishes people are so split by politics as a reaction to this pandemic. Just because I've dared say that this, what we experience in the West, is not a persecution, and persecutions happen somewhere else in this world. Yes, there are Christians who are persecuted, Christians who are being killed for their faith, but not in our countries. And I feel ashamed, again, that I even have to say this. Of course, the world doesn't like us. The world never liked Christians. The world doesn't like Christians and never will like Christians. Christ, again, tells us that. But there's a difference between the constant, permanent opposition of the world, which has been here from the beginning of the world and will be here until the beginning of time, and persecution. As someone who comes from a communist country, I know what persecution looks like. Anyway, I am also accused that I support gay marriage and that I am involved in, I don't know, promoting um, LGBT uh, agenda. And this comes because there is a gentleman who posted an article about the monastery and about myself in which he spoke positively about the monastery and about myself and encouraged his readers to see our videos and to visit our website. Um, I had no idea that this article was written. I have never been contacted by this gentleman. I have never met him, at least to the best of my ability to remember. I have never met him. I do not believe I have ever exchanged any correspondence on any topic at any time with him. Again, to the best of my ability to remember, because we do receive hundreds of emails every single week. And then this article appeared... And uh, because this gentleman uh, apparently supports uh, LGBT topics and agenda, because that website is supportive of that kind of topics, I automatically become a supporter myself. And I do try to understand, again, what lies behind all of this. And apart from evil intention, I cannot see anything. How can I prevent someone, anyone in the world, writing something about myself or the monastery? Am I supposed to Google my name every day or every other hour or something and read everything everybody writes and then respond to them? Forgive me, but that's not what a monk is supposed to do. I struggle to respond to the comments that people leave on our um, Facebook page or on our um, uh, YouTube videos. I struggle to get back to people who write us emails. People whom I love and I've been in touch with for years and years are upset because I'm always late in getting back to them. I don't have the time to police everything that everyone writes about myself or the monastery and I have absolutely no intention, zero intention to do it. My only involvement with the world, apart from praying for the world, is that I post these videos and I write our booklets in order to support the monastery and in order to support you. I am not going to spend my time policing everything everyone writes about us or about myself. I have nothing to do. I have had no involvement with that particular article. And actually, after I've read the article, I still don't understand where the idea that I support gay marriage comes from, because all that article does is that that gentleman simply says that I am sane and that he encourages his readers to watch these videos. I mean, I see nothing bad in that. Should I start censoring our viewers? Should we put 
a sort of a wall where I somehow check that you are all virtuous, holy people and only virtuous, holy people can hear these videos and share them and then talk about them or write about the monastery. And those of you who are sinners are not allowed to view them or share them or talk about them. Or how would you do that? And why would you do it? I mean, I would definitely not, never do it. It sounds completely unchristian to me. I am a follower of the one who was happy to dine with sinners and prostitutes and tax collectors because it is for them that he came. I am happy that anyone virtuous or sinner finds anything useful in what we do because that is our only hope that we have done something to, to put a drop of goodness and kindness and holiness into this world instead of poison as it is so very easy to do. There are so many ugly things written that I don't really know what to address anymore but these were the main ones. There's also and this is something that I particularly take to heart. There's also an accusation that I do not honor uh, the holy martyrs. How could I not honor Saint George or Saint Demetrius or all the wonderful holy martyrs? They are my hope for salvation. I'm a monk. My hope of salvation is the prayer of the Theotokos and of the saints. My hope of salvation is the prayer of every single one of the saints of God, those of whom I know and those of whom I don't. Yes, I have spoken against war, and yes, war is evil. War is evil. And I know that with absolute certainty, because Christ is the King of Peace. And because he says, blessed are the peacemakers, not the war makers. Blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of God. And this is what I hope for, for myself and for all of you. Even those of you who are promoting these things against the monastery, those of you who are just controlled by your anger and your hatred, I want us to be saved. I've wanted to become a monk since the second I knew monasticism existed because I wanted to repent for my sins and I wanted to repent for the sins of as many other people as I possibly can because I want everyone to be saved. This is all I know and all I want. I thank you all for your support of the monastery. I have told you before, and I'll keep saying it, without you, we would not exist. And I am proud in, in the grace and love of Christ. I am proud of what you have achieved through me with God's blessing in this monastery in 10 years. Hatred will come. Bad words will follow. But I trust that the Lord will speak into your hearts and will tell you the truth. And if you want to see the truth with your own eyes, once this pandemic is over, come and pray with us. Come and see our luxurious property on the island. Come and look with me for that miraculous, hidden, mythical massage room and maybe together we shall find it. Maybe there's a hidden, I don't know, underground room somewhere or maybe we have it hidden in the attic somewhere. Actually, we can't have it in the attic because there are bedrooms in the attic. I don't know, but maybe together we can find it. Please don't feel hatred against anyone. Please don't speak badly against anyone. 
please pray for everyone. And if you have found any use at any given moment in these 10 years of hard work to establish this monastery, if you found any use in something we've written or said or recorded in a talk that I've given in your parish, in a conference or a retreat I've given where you live, if there was anything good that we had to offer you, please repay us now by praying for the forgiveness of those who share these things, who need love, who need support. And I suppose I just happen to be the favorite scapegoat. If that's the case, may God bless anything. May God bless them. May God bless us. And may we all be saved. Amen, dear ones. Amen.